Hi, and welcome back to the Devo. I am Roman, and this is the third episode of our F Sharp introductory series. In the last episode, I was introducing to you the heart of functional programming languages, which is functions. During this pro process, Clara realized that her strawberry flavor is much more expensive in production than the vanilla flavor because she uses um, fresh strawberries for, for, for her strawberry flavor. So we need to help her um, because she had the idea that it, would, that it would be very smart if she would take different amount of money for her strawberry flavor than for her vanilla flavor. We're going to help you with doing this and to be able to do this, we need to talk about some more important concepts, which are expressions, control flow with if and else and pipes. This will be a packed episode. So Los geht's. All right. So we need to define a function that returns a different amount of money for different uh, kind of flavors. Let's do this. We define a function called price for, and the parameter of this function is one. Let's call it flavor. And we say if the flavor equals strawberry, then we return 1.1 else, that's vanilla, we return 0.9. All right, what did we do here? What is this function returning? Well, in the last episode, I cheated a bit on you because I said in the function, it's always the last line that is implicitly returned which would mean the last line of this function is 0.9. But this was not completely correct. What is returned is that the last expression of a function is returned. And in this case, this whole thing is one expression. So what is an expression? An expression is something very important in F-sharp because everything is an expression. So, but what is it? Well, paraphrasing the great Scott Lushen here, um, Expressions in programming language terminology means that we have a value and combined with a function, this value and the function combined produce another value that can be used somewhere else. And in F sharp, everything is an expression. So the, the counterpart of an expression is a statement. And in many languages like C sharp or JavaScript or Java or whatever, we have if statements. What does it mean? It means we can somewhere in our functions or methods or somewhere else, we can define a variable. And later on in an if statement, we change the value of this um, variable. This is not possible in F sharp. There is no in F sharp. There is no if statement. We also only have if expressions, which means our our if always needs to return something. So there is no chance that we can omit the else part of the function. So let's do this. We can just try to omit the else part. We get a red squiggle here and it says the if expression is missing an else branch um, and the then expression, uh, the, the then branch, which is this one, has type float because if it's an expression and not a statement at an else branch which returns a value of the same type. So it's not only that we need to return something always, we also need to return something of the thing of the same type. So we do this and we say 0.9 and we send this to the wrapper. Okay, and we see that price for is is the, is the identifier, which is a function of type string, which is the flavor, and it returns a float. Okay, as I said, an expression is a function and a value combined, and they together produce a new value. So here we have price for strawberry, which is a new expression, which returns a new value, which is a float 1.1. So in F sharp, expressions are evaluated from the inside to the outside. What does this mean? Well, it means 
that when we want to know how much money um, Clara gets or earns for selling strawberries during a day, we need to call the day result, for example, 50, and we need to call it with the price for the strawberries and braces. Now we get a squiggle here because it says day results. And when we send this to the REPL, we get an error uh, which says that the day result needs to be, is an int and needs to be a float. Um, this is one and this is one thing about the F-sharp type inferences, uh, type inference. We will come back to this later, maybe in another series. But for now, sometimes we need to tell F-sharp that um, we want to return a float because the multiplied operator is a uh, multiply operator is also defined for integers. And F-sharps um, infers, in this case, that this needs to be an integer. But let's send this to the ripple again and now it's float 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 and we can send this and we see that we get back 55. So what did I say or what does it mean to to that the the expressions are evaluated from the inside to the outside? We, we have to put this here in braces and then from the inside first we evaluate this expression and this becomes a value later on and this value can be used as the parameter for the day results function um, afterwards. This is okayish, but sometimes this makes the code a bit hard to read. F sharp to the rescue, we have the nice pipe operator in F sharp. And this gives us a nice syntax that, in my opinion, makes these kinds of expressions much nicer to read. So we can say price strawberry. And it's called price for a of course. And we can pipe this with those two nice characters here into day results 50. So when we evaluate this, we see that we also get back 55. So what did we do here? Well, the pipe operator always uses the value of the expression that um, happens before the uh, type operator. It evaluates this expression and puts the value that we get out of it in the first free slot of uh, the next expression. So for example, here we have the day results. The day result has two parameters. The first parameter is already taken by the 50. So we, we put the result of the price for strawberry expression into the slot of the second parameter. That's pretty cool. But again, this is also just an expression. So with one parameter slot, we could also write it like this, that we say strawberry is piped into price four, and the result of that expression is piped into day results 50. And again, we get the 55. Um, so these are just an expression that returns a value. So we bind this to strawberry, to the name strawberry result. And we copy this, say vanilla result, put the vanilla in here. She sold 100 vanillas and in the end we can just say, so we have a new value which is the strawberry result, we have a new value, value which is the vanilla result and we can use this um, to, to build a new expression which is strawberry result plus the vanilla result and we can evaluate all this and we get back 154. Pretty cool. So again, what did we do? We have an expression that is a value, returns a value, which is strawberry. This is put or is piped into the first free parameter of the next expression, which is price four, 
which only has one parameter. Then again, the whole result is piped into the next um, free parameter of the next expression, which is the result 50. So it's piped uh, um, onto the, into the second parameter of this um, expression. Now we are able to abstract this even further. So we can say, uh, what do we say, results for ice and salt. And we can say, we have the ice, we pipe this into the price for function, and we pipe this result into the day results with salt. And then we can call results for strawberry. This time, 100 times salt plus the results for vanilla. And this is this time, 50 times salt. We can evaluate all this and we see that we get back 155. Cool. So I think we helped Clara a lot, hopefully, because now she's able to sell um, different flavors with different prices. And we even learned a bit, hopefully, about expressions, about types, and about if and else control flow expressions. In the next episode, we will talk about brand building. So see you there. Bye bye.